let's say I run some type of a factory and I've studied my operations and I'm able to figure out how my cost varies as a function of quantity over a week on a weekly period. And so to visualize that, let me draw it, draw this cost function. So this is my cost axis. This right over here could be my quantity axis. So that's quantity or Q, my Q axis. Let me just call that Q. That's my Q axis. And my function might look something like this. My function might look something like this. It seems reasonable to me. Even if I produce nothing, I still have fixed costs. I have to pay rent on the factory. I have to probably pay people even if we produce nothing. And so let's say that fixed cost in the week is $1,000. $1,000, and then as my quantity increases, so do my costs. So if I produce 100 units right over here, then my cost goes up to 1,300, 1,300. If I produce more than that, you see my costs increase, and they increase at an ever faster rate. Now, I go into a lot more depth on things like cost functions in the economics playlist. But what I want to think about in the calculus context is what would the derivative of this represent? What would the derivative of c with respect to q, which could be also written as c prime of q, what does that represent? Well, if we think about it visually, we know that we can think about the derivative as the slope of the tangent line. So for example, that's the tangent line when q is equal to 100. So the slope, the slope of that tangent line is, you could view as c prime, or it is c prime of 100. But what is that slope telling us? Well, the slope is the slope is the change, the, the, is a change in our cost divided by the change in our quantity. And it's the slope of the tangent line. And we've, this is what we first learned in calculus. As we get to smaller and smaller and smaller changes in quantity, we essentially take the limit as our change in quantity approaches zero. That's how we get that instantaneous change. So one way to think about it, one way to think about it is this is the instantaneous, this is the, this is the rate right on the margin at which our cost is changing with respect to quantity. So if I were to produce just another drop, another atom of whatever I'm producing, how, at what rate is my cost going to increase? And the reason why I'm saying it right on the margin is we see that it's not constant. If our cost function were a line, it, we would have a constant slope. The tangent line would essentially be the cost function. But we see it changes right over here. Our, our, the incremental atom to produce here costs less than the incremental atom right over here. The slope has slope has gone up. And it might make sense. Maybe I'm using some raw material out there in the world. And as I use more and more of it, it becomes more and more scarce. And so the market price of it goes up and up and up. But you might say, well, why, why are you even, you know, why, why do I even care about the rate at which my costs are increasing? My the rate at which my costs are increasing on the margin, which is why this is called marginal, marginal cost. Well, the reason why you care about it is you might, try, you might be trying to figure out, when do I stop producing? Let's say this is orange juice. If I know that next gallon is going to cost me $5 to produce and I can sell it for $6, then I'm going to do it. But if that next gallon, if I'm up here, I've already produced a lot, and I'm taking all the oranges off the market, and now I have to transport oranges from the other side of the planet or whatever it might be, and now if that incremental of ga incremental gallon of oranges or, or, or a gallon of orange juice costs me $10 to produce, and I'm not going to be able to sell it for more than $6, it doesn't make sense for me to produce it anymore. So in a calculus context, or I guess you say in, a, in an economics context, context, if you can model your, model your cost as a function of quantity, the derivative of that is the marginal cost. It's the rate at which costs are increasing for that incremental for that incremental unit. And there's other, there's other similar ideas. If we, had, if we modeled our profit as a function of quantity, if we took the derivative, that would be our marginal profit. If we modeled revenue, that would be our marginal revenue. How much is the function increasing on the margin, as, or how much is the function increase as we increase our input, or as we increase our quantity on the margin?